Hey Crafty Fam, what's going on? It's DIY Alex and I am so excited to be back with you to celebrate National Craft Month and sublimate some keychains. This project is so cute and it's craft themed, which I haven't done in a really, really long time and maybe not ever on YouTube. So I think you guys are going to love it. But if you will let me know in the comments that you can hear me okay and see me okay, I'm gonna double check that things are going well on the computer and then we are gonna get started with this project because uh, you guys, I'm just so excited excited to share it with you. So excited to do some sublimation because you guys are just going to love this project. I just know it. Hey guys, how's it going? All right. All right. Hi, Gail. We are just getting started. So you guys, I've got my computer over this way. So that's why I'm looking in this direction, making sure I can read all of your comments. Hello. Hello. Will you guys let me know that you can hear me okay and see me okay? And if you can, then we will get started. I don't think this project is actually gonna take terribly long. Um, you guys might have some more questions and stuff that might um, run this live a little bit longer, but honestly, the project's really pretty simple um, as far as sublimation goes, but it's a little bit different, so I thought you guys might like it. Okay, good. Oh, Christina, it's your first live. Welcome, I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, Carla, that's okay. You can watch the replay later, no big deal. Welcome, Tara Lynn, good deal. Everyone says things are good. Hi, Carmen. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so excited to be live with you. Okay, so let's get into this project. This is one of those things that I have bought so many sublimation blanks, so many sublimation blanks, and I have never used them. So when I was trying to decide what I was gonna do with you guys today, I was like, let's use some of those sublimation blanks that I bought um, <laughs> and show you guys how to use them in case you want to grab them yourself. And this is a very similar um, set of skills that you can use for a lot of different sublimation crafts. This process is, well, I, I have, I hesitate to say that it's the same with all hard sublimation blanks because it's not always the same, but it's honestly very similar. And once you get practice with a certain type or a certain um, kind of like hard sublimation blank, like these keychains, then it's really going to translate to a lot of different projects. So things like coasters or like the A-sub, um, just like sign blanks that 143 carries, a lot of them are gonna be very, very similar. So once you try this, then you're good to go. And I did link everything that I'm using today down in the description of the video in case you wanna check it out yourself. I knew you guys would love these blanks and these files. So I have everything already linked and ready to go for you. Hey sis, welcome. Hey Gail, yay. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Candice. You finally caught a live. I have not done a lot of um, lives recently, and I'm gonna be doing more in the future. I will update you guys here really soon when I have a firmer schedule, but we are gonna be making things a little bit more regular for the live around here, and I think it's gonna be so much fun because I love hanging out with you guys and chatting with you and crafting with you, so I think it's gonna be a really fun asset to the channel. Hey, Brenda. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so excited. Of course, Carmen, I'm so happy to be here. Hey, Roseanne. Hi, Corey. Hi, Diana. Okay, good. All right, now let's go ahead and get this party started. So I'm gonna send you guys overhead so that you can see all of the fun supplies that I have going on today. And for some reason, my printer is talking to us. <laughs> Your guys' printers ever do the random thing where they're like, they just randomly make noise. There we go. That way you can see my hands and see my face. Okay, so we are gonna be working with this little set of, um, this little set of sublimation keychains that I bought from Amazon a while ago. And I even have stuff with notes on it because you guys know how I do. Always got everything very, <laughs> very uh, planned out and ready to roll. And that's actually what I spent most of my morning doing today um, because I have not worked with these blanks specifically. I wanted to work with them before we did a live together so that everything I'm showing you is tried and true and proven and all of that stuff. So this little kit is great. Oh, thanks, Roseanne. It's probably the highlighter. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, 
I just have to tell you, this past weekend, I did a girls weekend with two of my best friends, and we have had to we have had to push it back three different times. So we had a total of four different dates, and we finally got to get together. My friend Kayla had a baby back in June, so Colin is nine months old, and I got a chance to meet him, and it was just so good for my soul to get together with them. It was so much fun. So I'm still kind of coming off of that um, girl weekend high, and it was just a blast. Candace said, have you tried the new sublimation tumblers from 143? They change color in the sun. Candace, I bought some in every color. Have I picked them up from 143? No, ma'am, I have not, but I did buy them. <laughs> so I'm going to be going and picking that up as well as the new heat press very, very soon to give you guys more information about that. Hey, Irma, welcome. Okay, so let's talk about this um, little set of blanks. And like I said, this is linked in the description. It's no longer very pretty because I've been playing with it, but I wanna say it has like a total of maybe 40 different pieces in it. Um, it comes with several different shapes and it has, I think four of each if I remember right. So it has a house shape that looks like this. It has a set of hearts that looks like this. It has a square a circle, and then this little bone shape, and this rectangle. And there are four of each of these in the um, kit. So this is really, really great to get acquainted with sublimation. So if you're just starting out and you're like, I really don't wanna use, hey Kayla, welcome. Yes, that is not Kayla Norton's baby that I met this weekend. <laughs> That is my college friend, Kayla, though I have met her kiddos too, and they are wonderful as well. Hey, Cole, how's it going? I know it's been a long time since I've been live. I haven't done anything since I think our Valentine's Day live, so I'm excited to be back. Okay, so anyways, back to this kit. Um, this is a great kit if you are still getting comfortable with sublimation, and I'm sure you guys know if you started to get into it, that though sublimation is wonderful, it is a pricey venture. So trying to find blanks that you can experiment on that don't cost a whole lot are always a good thing because then you can get comfortable before you start using the higher price blanks, things that you're making for people, stuff like that. So this little set of blanks is a great um, thing to check out if that's something that you are interested sit in and all of this comes together so it's got all of these different shapes which I think is to a total of 40 I already started crafting on some of them so I'll show you those here in a second but it also comes with oh boy where are they <laughs> Oh, here they are. These little clear pieces. This is what you put through the hole to actually make it a keychain. So these are actually like hardboard little pieces that are cut probably with a laser. They have sublimation um, or like a polyester coating on both sides. So you can use them on both sides for sublimation designs. And then you add these little clear pieces in through the hole to give them something to hang on. Then you can put a key ring on it that comes also with the kit. And it also comes with colored tassels. And if you've done acrylic blanks before, you may already own some tassels but I like the fact that it all comes together and it gives you enough so that you can do that you can make a full keychain out of everything which is pretty cool so here's one of the samples that I've already worked with today so this is just a cute little glue gun image that I found in design space and then I added like a matching tassel and that's what the plastic looks like at the top I decided not to sublimate the back because this was just a test for me, but that's kind of where we're headed with today's live. And since it's March 1st, um, even if you're watching this in the future, that's okay, but it's National Craft Month. The month of March is National Craft Month, so I wanted to do some crafting theme projects um, that I thought would be cute. So that's why I did the glue gun. All my files you'll see are craft related, and then I also was experimenting with this little house shape. I tried welcome home on this side and then this one it cut off a little bit but this is a cute little image from design space so that's what i've been up to today and that's what we are going to work on good deal um cold this kit is from amazon and it's linked in the description if you guys want to check it out there are lots of things like this on amazon um, and also lots of related kits so if these are not your favorite shapes then feel free to look for another one but honestly like these are so general you can literally use these like regardless of what your interests are so i really like that about it hang on just a second guys i'm going to see if i can move my little square out of the way for you so that you can still see me without having the there we go, the square in the way. So I feel like that's gonna be a pain. There we go, all right. So that way that should be a little more out of our way. 
So I did some practicing. I tested with both sides and I actually tested with um, using infusible ink pens. And I was originally going to show you guys infusible ink pens in this tutorial. I just kind of ran out of time with my designs, honestly. So let me know if you want to see more details on writing with infusible ink pens for sublimation. I do have a tutorial already showing you how to make infusible ink pen mugs, but I can show you more if you guys want to see that. So let me know in the comments if you would be interested and hearing more about all the things. But I was testing things out, like seeing if we could go um, on both sides with the tape and everything. I wanted to make sure that I could get everything to pan out before I started giving you guys the scoop. So, good deal. Oh, no worries, Kayla. Oh, did you already order it a few weeks ago, Roseanne? In fact, I think I may have ordered this kit maybe like during, um, oh my gosh, Amazon Prime Day maybe. So I've had it for a really long time. Um, and that's why I decided to use it today. Okay. So let's get started with all the things. So the first thing I'm going to do is preheat my Cricut Easy Press. I am using an Easy Press for this today. And if you have an Easy Press too, your Easy Press does get hot enough for you to sublimate with. So I, um, looked up the settings using the Cricut heat guide. That's something I didn't link for you guys in the description, but I can link it for you if you want. You can also just Google Cricut heat guide, but the Cricut heat guide is really great for um, knowing what temperature to use with your easy press. And after, when I put in the settings that I thought were closest, cause they don't have, you know, non Cricut products on the heat guide. I just go as close as I can. And the settings that I ended up finding were 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Of course that's Fahrenheit, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 seconds is what I found worked best with my little blanks, but you may have to adjust accordingly. If you're not getting bright enough color, or if you're kind of burning your blanks a little bit, you may have to adjust it. But about 400 degrees is usually about right for most sublimation blanks. So when I got that on the heat guide, I was pretty sure that would work. And that's what I used with all of my other um, blanks. Cool. Yeah, Kristen, we just talked about this, um, but I will note that for you. And I, I need to add some more stuff about pens and writing with Cricut anyway. So thank you for your suggestion. Terilyn wants to know, would infusible ink sheets work? Yes, Terilyn, they absolutely would. Um, they would absolutely work for this because essentially, a, infusible ink sheets are basically just pre-printed sublimation sheets. So I printed all of these designs off of my sublimation printer, but they're essentially the same thing as an infusible ink sheet. Um, I just use my own printer, whereas the other stuff is pre-printed. So that's really the only difference there. Um, so I actually did use Cricut Design Space, as you can see with the um, black border around everything, which may surprise you because in most of my sublimation videos, I tell you, I don't recommend Cricut Design Space. The reason that I decided to use it was because I needed to be able to size everything very strategically to fit onto my blanks. So because I needed very specific sizes of each piece of clip art, I did go ahead and use um, Cricut Design Space because I could size each one and mirror it really quickly and easily. But any of these designs can be done in Canva, they can be done in PicMonkey, um, they can be done in Photoshop, they can be done in Inkscape and in StarCraft Create. I mean, the, the possibilities are seriously limitless. But the first step to getting this project prepped is finding the files you want to use and then sizing them for your blanks, especially little tiny guys like this, you have to be a little bit more careful. I also did link the two sets that I used in the description of the video. Um, if you want to use the same ones, I know they're backwards right now, but these crafting quotes were so cute and I found these on Etsy. So this is the Etsy link down below. You guys will see it when I show it to you. This one says, we don't talk about how much money I spent on glitter, which is absolutely accurate. Um, this one with a little hand set sketched cricket says, I can totally make that. This one says, home is where my heat press is. And this one says, all I need is wine and crafting, I think. They're, they all had to be mirrored. So that's another thing you have to do when you are printing sublimation designs yourself. You either need to mirror them in Cricut Design Space or you can mirror them in your printer settings or you can even save them as a 
as an image that's already flipped 180 degrees. That way when we put them actually, because we're gonna take them and put them with the ink side down on the blank. So the reason that we mirror is so that when we put them ink side down on the blank, they will look really cute. Another benefit of um, doing these via sublimation with these small quotes is that there's no weeding or anything involved. So I could totally just do this with vinyl. Honestly, these little um, quotes that are gonna go on my keychains, but since these are sublimation friendly, I thought I would just go ahead and print them out on sublimation using sublimation ink because that way I don't have to spend any time weeding or anything like that. So that's another plus. Hey, Belle, that's okay. We actually just started about 15 minutes ago, so you're not actually all that behind. Okay, so now that you know the process for how I got started, oh, wait a minute, I gotta talk about this clip art. So this crafting clip art, you guys, is so stinking cute. And I found so many different options that I liked. I couldn't link just one. So I linked um, a whole search result from designbundles.net down in the description of the video because there were so many cute options. But look how cute these little um, clip art pieces are. These are cute little printers. They also kind of look like crickets, but I think they're supposed to be printers. There's a glue gun and some washi tape and this little, I think it's probably maybe a glue bottle or possibly a glitter bottle paintbrushes and so much cute stuff. So my plan is to use um, a quote on one side of the blank and then find a piece of clip art for the back side so that we have something cute on both sides of it to um, take advantage of it. Because to me, as, um, I didn't say this already, so if you're a sublimation beginner, make sure that you know that um, sublimation blanks do have to be polyester coated. So that's why you have to specifically search out sublimation blanks or you have to be able to verify, say it's a fabric and it has a tag, that it has a high poly polyester content in order to um, accept and absorb the sublimation ink. So it, I figure as long as our blanks are double-sided, we might as well use up both sides, right? Especially because they are specialty sublimation blanks. So that's why I structured my designs that way, and that's why I thought this would work best. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, I'll figure out which ones I'm going to cut out. So I'm just gonna cut them out individually and I kind of did a bunch of random sizes. So we'll see what's gonna fit on each of our blanks as I cut them out. And of course, whenever you print with Cricut Design Space, you're always gonna get this um, line around the outside. This is a registration mark that you would normally use with print and cut, um, but we're not gonna use that for sublimation. So if you're using Cricut Design Space for sublimation, make sure that you cut that off because you do not want to sublimate that onto your design. So I'll cut out these quotes first because I know for sure I'm going to use the quotes and then we'll see what kind of clip art is going to work for the back of each of our designs. Also, I think these crafting clip art pieces would make super cute stickers. So if you are big into stickers, these would be perfect for that. And there's a lot of cute crafting quotes out there. I just find that a lot of them are not necessarily like my style, if you will. Um, so I really liked these ones from Etsy because I just thought they really spoke to me. For example, we're not gonna talk about how much money I spent on glitter. That is honestly probably something I've said more than most in my life. <laughs> so I really liked this set of quotes. I just thought it was so cute. Okay. So we'll cut each of these apart and then we'll pair it with a different blank. And then that way we can kind of decide what's going to fit on the other side. Okay, and I think these taller ones, I'm pretty sure I size that to fit on this. Yeah, and we might have actually, might be a little bit of a close call. <laughs> so we might end up cutting some off, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna pair these with each one that I want to use. Make sure they're gonna fit on there okay. Actually, it looks like we're gonna end up using the rectangle probably on a lot of these taller quotes. I don't know how well you guys can see through the paper. That's kind of the nice thing about sublimation paper being so thin as you can kind of see through it to line it up. That's what I did on a lot of these. Oh, you know what? No, I wanted to see it may not fit because of the way I printed it. But I was hoping home is where my heat press is would work with a little house. How cute would that be? No, I printed it just a little bit too big. So I'll have to go back and print some more for the house. But that's all right. We've got several of these and I knew that I was gonna use the rectangles a lot. So I didn't use any in my testing. 
Okay, and this one's a little smaller. Ooh, what if we did this one on the circle? I want to say I maybe size it for the circle. Yes, okay, I can totally make that. It's going to go on a circle keychain. Show you guys a little bit of variety. Ooh, could this fit on the heart? <gasps> no, the bottom's a little bit wide. So it's a little tricky when you're trying to print these out and um, get them the right size when you're working with something so small. Let's maybe do another square. Yeah, I think that'll work. Yep, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna set the rest of these aside so that I don't get them mixed up. And then I can pick out some clip art. Aussie Pop Hunter wants to know, is the sublimation ink expensive and where is the best place to get it from, please? Yes, absolutely. So um, I was saying yes to your question, not <laughs> to the fact that it's expensive, but it is pricey. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I love sublimation. It's very cool. It has a lot of possibilities. But if you are looking for a cheap craft, sublimation is not it. Um, because even the, just the startup cost, you have to buy a printer. If you're going to convert it yourself, you need to buy the ink. Um, and then you have to have specialty paper. And if you're not already, um, if you don't already have a heat press, you need to buy things like that. So it is definitely a bit of a pricey venture um, but I do think that it opens up a lot of, a lot of possibilities so it kind of depends on the type of crafting that you want to do and what your goals are um, but that's just my honest take on it because I'd be lying to you if I told you anything else now, as far as the best place to get it from the two types of ink that I have used so far are the um, oh my gosh my mind is blanking on the brand <laughs> What did I buy? Oh, that's right. Okay. So before Starcraft had a sublimation ink line, I had used the Hippo ink from Sublimation. Um, but now I prefer the Starcraft ink that is sold at 143 Vinyl. So either Hippo ink from Amazon or Starcraft ink from 143 Vinyl, which I think I linked... I linked StarCraft Inc. for you in the description of the video, but if you go to my Amazon store, you can actually see all of the sublimation supplies that I have ever bought from Amazon. So I try to keep that um, you know, up to date with all the new purchases that I make so that you guys can see the things I've actually tried. So I hope that helps with your, um, with your, uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I hope that helps with your sublimation questions because I know that it's a lot to understand. I also have a sublimation for beginners series on my YouTube channel that is going to be an ongoing series to help you guys understand sublimation even better. And I have full videos on talking about printers, talking about ink, all those kinds of things. So if you have more sublimation questions, um, then I would definitely recommend checking that out so that you can get those questions answered in full videos. Hey, Paul, welcome. Um, and also, I'm going to be adding to another video in March. I have another sublimation video for you guys coming very soon. There was a request from a couple of you. Um, it's a design with me video. So I'm showing you what it would take to design a design that I put on a shirt. Um, but I think it's going to be really, really helpful for those of you um, who are interested in getting into sublimation because one of the most intimidating parts for a lot of people is trying to figure out how to... Um, how to create your own designs and all things like that because that's one of the beautiful things about sublimation. But if you're used to using Cricut Design Space where it's usually really simple, you might be a little bit lost as to how to do that. So I think that video is really going to help you. Roseanne wants to know, do you have to completely use up the Hippo ink before changing to a different brand of sublimation ink? Yes, Roseanne, you do. You would want to get it as low as you can before you end up switching brands of ink. The only reason that I've tried two different brands is because I have two different sublimation printers. So I just chose to put different ink in each of them. So that's what I would recommend. Um, I don't think that, no, at this time, 143 does not ship to Australia. So sorry about that. Um, I would check Amazon and see what you can get from there because they are probably the best resource with the most options um, that I am aware of. So hopefully Australia, Amazon has some of those options for you. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start cutting apart some of these pieces and I will pair them with each of the keychains. Alrighty. I'm worried I'm going to bump my microphone, so sorry about that, guys, if it's a little bit loud for you. Okay, so I definitely want to do, I think I cut the paintbrush, or I printed the paintbrush specifically for the back side of the 
rectangle. You're welcome, Roseanne. Of course. Yeah, I think that's definitely what I put back there because I just really liked that shape and I thought that it would look good. In fact, we could even, if I can figure out and make sure that I can get them right. I could even do two paintbrushes, kind of like that on the back side. Wouldn't that be cute? Yes, you're so welcome. And so another thing, well, I don't want to jump the gun yet, so never mind. Let me <laughs> let me get everything cut out and paired together, and then I will explain the next step because this one varies based on your project a little bit. And I know that sublimation can be super confusing. That's why I made the Cricut for Beginner series because I was also super confused by sublimation when I was getting started. I was so intimidated by all the different things that you have to have and all the different things you have to know. And there's so many different things from what we're used to doing if you guys are Cricut crafters like me. So I was super intimidated um, by just all the options, you know? It's a lot to understand. But it's also really, really fun. Once you start diving in and it becomes a little bit less scary, then it turns into a lot more fun because the ink gets so much brighter after you press it that it's kind of like magic, honestly. So that part is super satisfying and really, really fun. I'm gonna see if this little glitter bottle can fit on the back of my circle. I think that would be so cute back there. Ooh, yeah. The top of it may get cut off by the hole in the keychain, but honestly, I think that's gonna be super cute. Yes, we're gonna do that. Okay, and then I've gotta find one more here. I don't know if these little printers will fit on the back, but if it does, we're definitely doing that because I thought these were so cute. And this clip art bundle in particular has um, all of the shapes. They have, some of them have the little kawaii face on them. That's what this little face is called. It's like a, I think it's pronounced kawaii. Um, which I love, but they also have all the symbols without that face as well. So that's why like the glue gun, I did not use the kawaii face because I just didn't think it went quite as well with the theme. So you can do some with and some without if you get the same clip art bundle as me. And I can use these on other projects. So I will definitely hang on to these for something else in the future, probably for a lot of what I'm gonna do with the rest of these keychains. So that works out really well too. These would, oh, I think I already said that, but these would make super cute stickers. Super, super cute. I probably will make them into some stickers for National Craft Month. Okay, so now that we have everything paired together with what we know is going to fit, we have a couple more steps until we can actually press, but just for the sake of time, I am gonna go ahead and start preheating my Cricut Easy Press. So I'm gonna preheat it. You guys, I did something I've never done before <laughs> today. I somehow got hot glue all over one section of my Easy Press on the bottom. So that's part of why I had to move our live back to 415 because I somehow, I, you know what I think happened? I think I had a glue stick in this cradle and I think when I heated up my Easy Press, I think it got it like got hot and started melting some of the hot glue because I did a um, craft or noon with my Bible study ladies the not this past weekend but the weekend before that and I took my easy press with me so I think that that's probably what happened um, but it was it was a real pain <laughs> getting stuff on your easy press is not a good time Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and it's already preheated to where I want it. In case you guys didn't see that, um, the recommendation for sublimation with all of these things going on, that's why it's a good idea. Let me back up <laughs> and say that in a more clear way. So I am using the settings 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 seconds. And again, I got that from the Cricut heat guide, which I already talked to you guys about. But the reason it's good to go in and check in on the Cricut heat guide is because whenever you are putting in all the factors, when you get to the heat guide, you have to put what kind of easy press you have, what kind of material you're pressing and what you are pressing on. So I had to say, I had to say that I was using infusible ink transfer sheets, of course, because that's the closest thing to sublimation ink. And then I had to also list um, what material I was pressing onto. And I think I chose coasters because these are the most similar to the coasters. So you are kind of winging it a little bit when it comes to choosing your settings on the heat guide, but all in all, it's still really helpful for knowing what um, settings to use because that can be confusing. Hey Ruth, thanks so much. I'm glad you like them. I think they're gonna be super cute too. 
Okay, so next when it comes to um, getting these guys ready, I'm gonna zoom in for you a little bit. The next thing that you need to check for anytime you're working on any kind of like hard board type of blank like this is you need to check for a, um, a clear film, kind of like an acrylic blank. You need to check for a clear film over top the side that you're pressing on to make sure that you don't accidentally press onto the film instead. So the um, side that has the film on it is usually pretty obvious. I'll see if I can show you guys what that looks like. Well, maybe that one's looking a little funky on this side. <laughs> I'm thinking that's probably the side with the stuff on it, but that one's got a lot of marks on it. Also, you guys probably know this, but sometimes when you get stuff off of Amazon, you have to be a little bit careful because not all of them are the same level of quality. So you might end up with a few that don't look as good as others, but for something like this where it's just like practice, that's totally fine. Well, those are hard to tell too. So what you're looking for when you're looking for the film is you're, you'll you usually see one side that has a lot more stuff going on than the other side. So it'll have like, um, let's see, I don't know if I'll be able to show you in the light or not, um, but it'll have like, it'll kind of look like it's scratched up or maybe a little bit dented. And that's usually the side that has a film on it. But you do want to understand that the first couple of these that you go to do yourself, you may end up scratching and you may not end up using. So that's another reason why I, um, Kayla said, I've done that. You mean sublimate onto the clear plastic? I know it's really, really easy to do. So that's why you want to double check before you get started. And you may have to sacrifice a blank or two to make sure that it doesn't because you may end up scratching a little bit of the surface. So I just use, oh yeah, here we go. And then my easy press is done. Um, but the little edge of my keychain right here, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it is lifting a little bit. So I can clearly see that this is the side that has the film. So I just use my weeding tool to get it started. And I'll go ahead and pull off the film. And this specific blank set, I could not find a film on the opposite side. Um, so it's very possible that I am sublimating on <laughs> the film side on the other side, but I could not get it to lift when I tried it before. Oh no, this one does. Okay, so I just used my weeding tool up in the corner and I was able to get a um, film off of this side too. So I guess it kind of depends on the blanks. So like I said, just make sure that you know that you may have to explore a little bit before you actually kind of know for sure what's going on with each one because they're all a little bit different. And the way that I like to do these is I like to do um, the design on each side. I don't like to tape both of them because the side that you're sublimating needs to be facing up so that it gets the heat from the heat press. So I do not go ahead and tape both sides. I just wait and then I flip it. But I, you probably could do that. I'm just a little bit um, nervous. I do that too. I was excited and in a hurry and I totally forgot. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that. So what I'm going to do to secure the quote down on my circle is I'm just going to start by trying to line it up through the paper and then I'm going to tape it in place using heat resistant tape. So this is just Cricut heat tape that I have in a fancy tape dispenser. And I like this tape dispenser because it automatically, um, pulls pieces off for me. So when I turn this little wheel, it goes ahead and cuts the pieces so that I don't have to mess with it. And they're all the same size. So that part is really, really nice. I have this tape dispenser linked in um, the description of this video as well. So it can be a little challenging to see where you're placing the design exactly. So I just use the fact that the paper is thin and kind of take advantage of that to get it where I think I want it. So, and the other thing you can do, if you hold it up to a window, that makes it a lot easier to see as well if you're crafting during the day and it's light outside. Actually, I'm gonna move that down just a little bit. So, and we know that it's going in the right direction because now that it's no longer mirrored, we can actually see what it says through the paper. So we know that we're on the right track. So what I'm gonna do to keep this paper in place is I'm gonna go ahead and tape the top and the bottom. And you don't have to worry about putting tape across the back. Um, you wanna try to keep everything as even as you can, but even after heating all this with the tape stuck to the back, I did not have any issues with discoloration or anything like that. The only thing that can be an issue 
is if you are taping the back and it's making the pressure uneven onto the blank, that can mess it up a little bit. So that's what the first side can look like. And we'll go ahead and lay that down. Ruth said, when you sublimate on the protective sheet, can you pull it off and try again? Yes, you can just, yeah, you can just pull it back off and try again, assuming you can get it off if you haven't melted it too much. So we'll go ahead and open up the next blank and do the same thing. We'll see if we can get the protective film off of both sides or one side, or we'll try to figure it out. <laughs> we'll just see what it's got. I'll start on this side because I can see that there's a film right here. There we go. So there's one side and then we'll flip it over and see if we can get a film off of the other side. And see that side doesn't feel like it has a film on it. So it may just be that they're a little bit inconsistent. It's kind of a different feel because as I gently scratch this up, I usually do up towards the corner so that it's not as obvious. Hey, Glenn, welcome. And when I go like this and try to pick a piece up, I don't get anything. So I don't think that there is a second film on this side. So that's why it's a little bit tricky. It just kind of depends. And something I didn't do with the circle, but I probably will with the square, since this side did not have a film on it, is I do have a um, lint roller, and I'm just quickly rolling over the top of it to get any dust or dirt off of it. You'll also notice that the edges are black, and that's usually because these are laser cut. So the black edges just come from being cut by the laser, which is no big deal. Um, but it is something to keep in mind that that can get on your hands and stuff a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna try and line this up the best that I can on my keychain. And then when I'm happy with the placement, I will just tape this side, each side down. Kayla said I melted mine to it. Yeah, I kind of wondered if you go ahead and tape it with the um, plastic film, you may end up melting the film. So it's just one of those things you always wanna check just in case. Okay, I'll set these down here. Hopefully I remember which one I <laughs> was gonna put on each one. I'll do all the quotes first to make it easier to remember and then we'll go back and do all of the clip art pieces. All right, so start the film in that corner. And it comes off pretty easily, so you shouldn't have to work super hard as long as you're using something nice and sharp like a pin pen or your weeding tool. But since this one had a film on this side, I'm probably not going to worry about using my lint roller with it. Ooh, this one is going to be tight because I printed it a little bit large. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it up against my lights. I'm sorry if that makes it hard to see for you guys. I'm gonna hold it up against my lights to make sure that I get it in the right spot. The glitter piece is hanging off just a little at the bottom. There we go. I think I can do it right around the hole. It's a little tricky to get the hang of. And even when I was um, making my samples for today's live, I got a few that were a little messed up. So. I'm certainly far from, far from perfect on this. Oh shoot, I didn't check the back for a film. Darn it, okay. Let me check the back for a film too. Yep, and we got a film on this back side. So something to keep in mind if you guys go ahead and buy this same kit is some of them may be a little inconsistent. Okay, so now that I know that the film is off, I can line this back up. Okay, so once I think I have it where I want it, I'm just gonna hold it down using my finger. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tape from the back side since the paper is covering the whole front side. So, well, I don't wanna get a wrinkle in there. Mess up the pressure, so I'll just do it kind of like that. 
I just like to sort of fold the tape over that paper. And I like to tape at least two sides. I found that that keeps it from doing any moving or anything funky like that. Hey, Teresa, thank you. I'm having a wonderful day. Same to you. All right, guys, the last one. So, there we go. That was easy. Got a film on this side. Oops, it's a little sticky. So I've got kind of a trash pile off to the side that I'm sticking everything together with all my sublimation paper and everything. Okay. And then, yep, and this side's got one too. So, peel this off of there. And now we are ready to roll. So I did the hole on the right, on the upper right corner of this keychain. So maybe I'll flip it over and try it on the opposite side and see where I like it over here. And I might trim a little bit of the paper away, just that way I can tape from the front side for this design. I like to leave a little bit extra because I can always tape on the extra paper and I can always trim more away. You know, it's kind of one of those things you can't add it back, um, but you can always remove extra. <laughs> so I always try to leave a little bit more than I think I'm going to need. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm just looking through the... Um, I'm looking through my with my light, so that's why I'm tilting it up sideways, so I can see where the little circle is casting a shadow on the paper, so that I know that I'm not getting any of my quote cut off by the hole of the keychain. And I try not to tape it right over the sublimation ink. That's not always possible, um, but it does help a little bit. Oh, Paul said Michael sent you. Michael is amazing. He is. We are crafty friends and we are friends in real life now that we live in the same city and Michael is awesome. Roseanne said, to clarify, even though you are only heating one side, you're still taking the cover off of both sides before heating. Yes, Roseanne, that's what I would do. Now, some of these things, it's one of those things where you can just do whatever you think is best. I like to go ahead and take the covers off because while I'm doing it, I don't want to forget about it because um, I would hate to flip it right over, get straight to it, and then forget, you know? But either way, that's a good question. You can still do it however you think is best. If you want to separate that process, you totally can. Hey, how's it going? You've always been curious on how to do these. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you can start with on you can start with car coasters, but honestly, guys, this process, like I was saying earlier in the beginning, any of these little hard board crafts are gonna work in a very similar fashion. So if you want to try these, then it doesn't really matter where you start. I also like the idea of starting with a kit like this, or maybe even the car coasters, because you have so many that you can try and get better with, then I feel like it's a good starter craft because just in case things don't go quite right the first time, then um, you know you have plenty to practice with. Okay, so now that I have all of my pieces ready to go, next I need to get some butcher paper for all of them because anytime you sublimate, whoops, keeping my Cricut Easy Press on there, <laughs> you always want to have butcher paper um, on both sides of your prints because this way um, if any ink bleeds through or anything, you're not going to get it on your Easy Press or on your Easy Press mat. And whenever you're using Easy Press, always use the Easy Press mat. If you do not have one of these, it is imperative to the success of your Easy Press. We have a running joke around here about the Easy Press mat because I was using the Easy Press on a live, I think last January, and I forgot to put the Easy Press mat underneath my um, Easy Press when I was using it on, I think maybe a koozie. And I ended up really, really heating up my self healing mat underneath my um, Easy Press, and I made a huge bump in my Easy Press or in my self healing mat. So I ended up actually having to buy a self healing mat. So what I did today, because these are going to be heated for such a long time, as I actually layered a spare, um, like older self healing mat underneath my Easy Press mat, because 400 degrees for 60 seconds is a lot of heat, regardless of the type of table covering that you have. So I saved some of my older ones of these self healing mats for things that are going to be really messy or things like that. So I actually have two layered on top of each other underneath my Easy Press. 
Yeah, Kristen said, Michael's how you found me as well. I know. And yes, Michael and Morgan both. They are just such wonderful humans and so much fun. I adore both of them. They are wonderful. So the nice thing about having these kind of smaller projects is I'm just gonna take one piece of butcher paper and stick all of my keychains inside and then shut the other piece of the butcher paper. So that makes it super, super easy. So again, I'm gonna put my keychains in here with the ink side facing up. And I'm just gonna make sure that my easy press can hit all four of them at the same time. I have a nine inch by nine inch easy press, so that'll be really easy to do. But if you're doing this and you have a smaller one, make sure that you can get everything all evenly in one press. So then I'm gonna shut the other side of my butcher paper. So I've got coverage on both sides. And then I'm just gonna set my easy press on top like this and press the Cricut button so that it can count down for us. Oh, cool, Dee, that's awesome. Belle, that happened to you too, Belle, I know. Oh, thank you, Kayla, it was the wine bag that I warped my mat over really, really bad, and you guys have, you guys have remembered that since like the rest of forever, and it cracks me up. I think of you guys all the time. Um, so I pulled this out before our live started because I was like, can't let them down today. Can't, can't warp my mats. <laughs> And in fact, I keep several of these health healing mats on hand uh, because I really like this pink pattern. So I bought several of these to make sure that I have them. But I just like them in general because I really do think that it's helpful. If you're messy like me and you're always making things a mess, it's always good to have something done on your table to protect your surface so that you don't mess it up. You know, when it comes to paint or polycrylic, that's actually what ruined this one. I couldn't get the polycrylic off of it. So the gray side is super um, kind of shiny and sticky from that. Okay, then once we're done, we'll set this aside. And the cool thing about sublimation is you can go ahead and um, open everything up and look at it if you want to. You just have to be careful not to burn yourself. So I do have heat resistant gloves that I'm going to use when I remove the paper and tape off of my blanks so that I don't have to hurt it. Oh, good question. Okay, so several of you were asking about that. Um, so the pressure listed on the Cricut Heat Guide said no pressure. And you have to remember that when you're using an Easy Press, the weight of the Easy Press itself is already adding a little bit of pressure. So literally the Heat Guide listed no pressure, so I did not put any pressure on top of the Easy Press. But again, that's why it's beneficial to look up that Heat Guide for every project when you're using the Cricut Easy Press so you know exactly what you should be doing. And then you guys are saying, got some different tips and things. Kristen said, I know it should be butcher paper, but can parchment paper be used? Kristen, I feel like a lot of people use parchment paper. I bought this big roll of butcher paper from Amazon, like probably a year ago when I was gonna get started with sublimation. I know it's really kind of zoomed in for you guys. Let me zoom out again. I forgot about that, sorry y'all. There we go. Um, but this butcher paper roll is like 16 inches, so it's honestly really, really big. Um, so I've been using this the entire time because I just never run out. But I'm pretty sure parchment paper would work fine as well. Oh, that's a good idea, Terilyn, to put your um, project on top of an ironing board to um, hurry and cool it down. Hey, Joy, we are sublimating some keychains. So we have just done one side for now, and then we're gonna do the other side here in just a moment. Yes, Dee, I can definitely show you how to do the ceramic coasters. I'd be happy to do that. In fact, I have some and I contemplated doing that for today. So good question. Okay, so now that we have all these ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the paper off of them. So what I like to do is hold them in the heat resistant glove hand and then I use my tweezers so that I don't hurt myself while I peel the paper off. And sometimes the tape makes it a little bit difficult. It's still kind of warm, but I can get close enough with my hand. And you can just rip the paper away. That's another nice thing about sublimation is that you don't have to wait for it to be perfect. You can just go ahead and rip it off. So here's the first one. All I need is wine and crafting. Turned out so cute. And I love the way that that little sketched Cricut looks. I think that's such a cute little detail. So there's number one. The next one, we don't talk about how much money I've spent on glitter. Give me an amen in the comments if you agree with that. <laughs> yeah, Kayla, she said it's so much butcher paper and the whole roll is like $17. That's what I did and that's what I've been recommending because it's just so easy. 
So that one is pretty close to the borders of my keychain, but it worked out well. We don't talk about how much I've spent on glitter. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, hi Michael, how are you? We were just talking about you. You always say that about me on all your lives. We were literally just talking about you because lots of folks have followed me because of your recommendations. So your ears must have been burning. <laughs> Thanks, Roseanne. I love these crafting graphics. Like, oh my gosh, I need more of these in my life. And in fact, the bundle had a lot more than what I could download today. So I'm definitely going to go back and do some more. This one's probably my favorite of all of them. It says, I can totally make that with a cricket in the middle because you're not even a crafter if you haven't said this in the craft store at least once, probably in a Hobby Lobby. See, I can totally make that. How stinking cute is that? Adorable. Adorable. Joy wants to know, I can do a few of these with friends initials on them. Yes, this would be perfect for that because they're super small. Well, they're not super, super small. They're like, they're like around two and a half inches depending on the shape, which I think is just right really because they're super cute, but I don't like a big, huge, chunky keychain. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm actually going to use a keychain, I don't like it to be super big. So these are a perfect size for me. And here's the last one. Home is where my heat press is which turned out so cute. Okay, so that's right, Gail, amen. So now that we've gotten all of our um, front sides done, what we're gonna do is flip them over and do the exact same thing on the back side. So I will just start with the little clip art pieces that I cut out. So I have the little um, paint brushes that I'm gonna use on the rectangle. So we'll start with that. And I'm actually gonna cut it a little more narrow around the head of the paintbrush because I'm gonna try to tape these in opposite directions and I wanna make sure that I don't um, overlap them. So I'll stick this one here. And we'll place the other one here too. Yes, Gail, you do need an Alex and Michael crafting day. You hear that, Michael? We've been talking about that recently. We were discussing it for a, um, an occasion I have coming up because my YouTube channel is getting ready to hit 100K subscribers. And you guys, I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. So we might have Michael on sooner rather than later. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Oh yeah, family pictures would be super cute. Okay, so now that I have the two paint brushes, I don't know how well you guys can see that through the paper, but I have the heads pointing in an opposite direction. I'm just gonna go ahead and actually, I'm gonna cut off the edge of this one because the ink needs to go directly on the blank. So I wanna make sure that I am not messing up the, um, making sure that the ink is definitely touching onto the blank. So this one might not turn out quite as perfectly because I don't know how well I'm going to be able to guess on that placement, but we're going to take a shot here. That's okay, Dee. So these are kind of like a hardboard material. They're not exactly ceramic. Um, I think that they're like maybe some kind of like MDF board with polyester on both sides maybe. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Belle said, Miss Cutie Pie and Mr. Extra. I think that sounds like a new YouTube channel. What do you think, Michael? <laughs> a new show, Miss Cutie Pie and Mr. Extra. That would be hysterical. <laughs> and so accurate. <laughs> Michael's crafty pants are on. I hope that your crafty pants are always on, right? We were joking earlier about how, um, or well, I was joking to myself, by myself in my craft room, <laughs> that um, I like the fact that there's a National Crafting Month because how fun is that? But honestly, every, every month of my life is National Crafting Month. So I almost like laugh out loud a little bit when they say things like, it's National Crafting Month. Because I'm like, all day, every day of my life is National Crafting Month. I don't know about you guys, but I'm never not crafting <laughs> but I also don't need to be told more than once to make a fun excuse to craft some more so can't be mad about that oh thanks Dee um you know Dee I have not been doing them regularly I've not been doing regular lives but I'm getting ready to change that so hang tight because I'll have a response for you real soon. I got to figure out what my schedule is going to look like. Um, but I'm going to be live more often because I miss you guys when I don't do lives. 
<laughs> Kristen, that is the real question. She said, would the two of you get any crafting done? Probably not, honestly, probably not a whole lot, but it would be real entertaining the whole time. You know, in fact, we were talking about this and Michael asked me if I could handle it. <laughs> I was like, if I can handle Heather from 143 going live, I guarantee I can handle whatever you have to throw at me. <laughs> oh, Roseanne, I didn't know that March was National Nutrition Month. That's cool, too. That's true. That's true. He does he does wear crafting shorts, too, which is also acceptable. In fact, it's a beautiful day outside. So if you were wearing crafting shorts, I, I can I can hang with that. I can definitely hang with that. I walked outside to get the mail earlier today and I was like, oh, it's beautiful out here. It kind of feels like spring, <laughs> which is exciting. Everyone in my neighborhood starts walking this time of year. That's how I can tell that the weather's nice outside because I craft up from the second floor and I can see that everyone is walking and I'm like, it must be a nice day. <laughs> No, we would absolutely not get anything done. But you know what? It'd be real fun. Real, real, real fun for us to go live together. Okay. So the, the last one I'm doing is a little glue gun on the back of this. And it's a little tricky to get it where I want it because it's kind of a funky shape. But I think that that's about in the right place. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Kristen, a 15-minute challenge with Alex and Michael. That is a recipe for a massive anxiety attack. <laughs> Michael and I are both very anxious people, so though that might be fun, somebody might have to go to the hospital. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Yes, um, Kayla came and visited me last spring already. I can't believe it was that long ago. And we did not get like basically any of the crafts that we said we were going to get done. So I'm pretty certain the same thing would happen to Michael. No hat for Michael. You have to actually just, you have to fix your hair again. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys are a hoot. <laughs> Ruth said it would be awesome. My son is six and he's been watching Alex for a while. He just started to watch Michael. He would have a blast watching the two of you. Well, I don't know, Michael. Kind of sounds like we have to make that a thing. In fact, I need to call you later this week anyways to tell you about some other stuff. So maybe we can talk about it then. <laughs> oh, okay. So now that we have everything taped down again on the other side, now I'm gonna do is cover it with butcher paper again and press it. Now there is one thing I wanna caution you on when you're using butcher paper. Do you guys see, it's really faint, but you can actually see the quotes from a little bit of the blowout from the other paper. So I am going to, I'm actually gonna flip this around so that the bottom, no, cause I don't wanna mess it up. Okay, I'm changing my mind. I'm gonna move things around so that my um, keychains are in a different place so that the blowout from the first round of keychains doesn't affect any of the ink for this, this round. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yep, 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 that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go like that. Okay, yep, all right. And then I need to cut this piece off because I don't wanna mess up the pressure. Oh, a mystery box. You all are going, you all are getting wild in the comments, aren't you? <laughs> Paul said, even end up being a hot mess. I am also a hot mess. We are a hot mess made in heaven. <laughs> Michael said, a true story. Last time I talked to Alex on the phone, I was on my way to a meeting and I literally missed nearly every turn because I was having so much fun. He did. He was on the phone. He's like, oh, missed my exit. Oh, man, I missed my turn. I was like, oh boy, we like even being on the phone makes us a mess. <laughs> that's true, Belle. Michael is definitely handsome without his hat. I think that's a huge compliment. And it's true, Michael. Maybe we can get you to fix your hair again. <laughs> yeah, I don't normally wear a hat, Joy, so you're you're good with me. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are such a hoot. Michael is he's the best, the greatest ever. Great human, great crafter, so creative, so much fun. Uh-oh, we're getting distracted, see? That's what we're good at around here. <laughs> 
Okay, so now that I have these all lined up, I just need to make sure that my Easy Press is going to get all of them when I um, do my press. But I'll go ahead and close my little butcher paper um, contract contraption that I've made here, and then we'll put the Easy Press on top. We don't need to do any pressure. So we were discussing pressure earlier, but in case you guys are just now joining us, um, the Cricut Heat Guide, based on the things that we are pressing today, listed no pressure on its um, on its recommendations. So I'm just letting the pressure from the Easy Press do it because you have to remember that the Easy Press does have a little bit of weight. It's not super heavy, but even just the pressure from the Easy Press is probably enough to honestly be considered like light pressure. So I don't know if no pressure is possible, but light pressure from the Easy Press is good enough to um, get this project done. <laughs> Michael said he's literally fixing his hair right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You guys are so funny. Oh my gosh. It's perfect. <laughs> Aussie Pop Hunter said Michael Hatless. I love it. <laughs> We're starting a campaign. <laughs> Distraction is the name of our game though for both of us. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to pick this up and put it back in its cradle. I'm going to wait a second because it looks really hot. You guys probably can't see that, but there's like a little bit of steam coming off of the top. Oh gosh. You guys, I don't know if um, you heard, oh no. I wonder if that tainted the color a little bit because some of the paper wasn't covering it. Okay, hold on, sorry. Let me wait until it has a second. I was looking at this square one. It looks like it might've browned a little bit. Might be a little bit too much heat. But I did something earlier that I've never done in my entire life. I don't know how this happened, but I got hot glue on the bottom of my Easy Press. And then I was panicking because it would not come off. Um, I was using like a cleaner and it literally was not budging. So I used a little red scraper and I was like manually scrubbing it off. And then I was looking for my iron cleaner because when before I had a heat press, when I used HTV with my iron, I have gotten HTV on my iron before. So I bought iron cleaner. And my husband's like, what are you doing? And I said, I was like, I was like, I'm looking for iron cleaner. We, I know we haven't used it in years, but like, where's the iron cleaner? He's like, we probably don't have any. What did you do? And I told him about it. And he's the one who figured out it was hot glue. I just thought it was like this mystery thing that somehow got all over my easy press. And he's like, I don't know how you did that or how you're going to fix it, but that's hot glue. <laughs> so the hot mess express is just real all day, every day. D, he does have hair under that cap. Yes, it was. Appa uh, Michael, apparently you just made an impression on everyone because they are super, super excited. And I actually, that was the, the evening that we had um, dinner, me, Michael, and Morgan. And I was surprised to come back to my house and find Michael live. So apparently you made quite the impression, Michael. That's hilarious. <laughs> Okay, now that we've given this a second to cool, let's go ahead and peel these pieces off because I'm excited to see what these look like. So I'm gonna use a heat resistant glove on one hand and I only use it on one hand because the gloves are huge for me. They only come in one size. So I use a pair of tweezers without a glove on the other hand because I cannot, um, I can't do anything when I have my <laughs> gloves on both hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by peeling my paper or excuse me, I said peeling my paper as I was peeling my tape. Start by peeling the tape. And the really fun thing about sublimation is that you don't have to wait. So as soon as you um, can touch everything, you can peel off the paper and the tape, which I love because I am not about waiting for it. I'm not about waiting for it to cool. I don't love that. The struggle is definitely real, for sure. Oh, you guys, here's our first one. Look how cute that turned out. And the brushes are actually pretty even on the back. I'm kind of impressed. I was just kind of winging it there. <laughs> so it actually turned out pretty good. Okay, let's try our next one here. I'm just obsessed with these little, um, these little clip art pieces. These are so cute. So stinking cute. All right. Sometimes you gotta be a little aggressive with your tweezers <laughs> and just rip it off there if you can't get it. 
Thanks, Ruth. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining us. Oh my gosh. Look how bright and vivid this turned out, you guys. How cute. A little bottle of glitter with a face on it. Ah, it's perfect. I love it. Oh my gosh. I underestimated how excited I would be when I was peeling these off. You guys, I'm a little sad about this one. It kind of looks like I may have yellowed the... I might have used a little bit heat, a little too much heat for this blank without having a piece of paper over it because it looks a little more brown than when I pressed it. Huh. That's okay. See, that's why it's important to try lots of things, lots of settings, because you never know what's going to be a little too much for one thing might be perfect for something else. So the thing about sublimation, I do not think sublimation is hard personally, but what is tricky about it is that it's a lot of trial and error. So just because something works on one thing one time does not mean that it's going to stay that way forever. So that's what you have to understand about sublimation. That's why I consider it a more advanced craft because you have to have the ability to uh, troubleshoot and problem solve and do things a little bit differently each time because you never know what's going to work from project to project. But check out how cute that glue gun is, you guys. Uh, it turned out so fun and bright. I love it. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. Roseanne said, the hole at the top of the glitter bottle is perfectly placed. It really is. It really is. That turned out so cute. It did cut into the glitter bottle a little bit, but it's so close. It looks like it was on purpose. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, we have this cute little printer. And I guess I kind of just put them on there based on what would fit best on the shape, but the glitter bottle probably would have gone best with the glitter quote, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how cute that little printer is. Printing little heart stickers. If that's not DIY Alex, then I don't know what is. <laughs> so we've got the little printer with the hearts, and then on the other side, it says, we don't talk about how much money I've spent on glitter, because accurate. Then on the, um, hold on, I'll hold it in this hand. On the um, circle keychain, we have the glitter bottle on one side, and then it says, I can totally make that because you all know we all go to Hobby Lobby and see all the decor and we're like, that's cute, but I can totally make that. <laughs> and then we have the glue gun on one side of the square and it looks like I did, um, the edges are a little yellow. Can you guys see that? And I wonder if maybe I needed to put a piece of sublimation paper over the whole thing. This one had the butcher paper over it, but the edges that are browned did not have sublimation paper. So that could be why these are a little more brown. And then the quote on the other side says, all I need is wine and crafting. Also a great quote and accurate for me. And then on this one, we have the two paintbrushes on the one side. And then if you flip it over, it says, home is where my heat press is. So super, super cute. I love how these turned out. So let me show you quickly how to finish these up because the great part is the end is super, super easy. The way that the hardware works on these is just, oh my goodness, it's so fast. So the kit comes with, I'll just show you straight from the box. It comes with a couple of containers of tassels as well as key rings. Now some of them are plain key rings like this. And then the rest of them do have a, um, like a, a little bit of a chain dangle. So it kind of depends on the look that you're going for uh, because you don't have to, you don't have to stick it straight onto the plastic piece if you don't want to. You can have a little bit of a longer drop on your keychain. Oh, thank you guys. I'm so glad you love them. I do too. I do too. They're adorable. Okay, so the way that each of them works is that you're gonna get a plastic piece out like this. And then I like to have the key ring ready to go and the tassel, because if you do that, then you don't have to struggle to put it on. It's just really quick and easy. Let me go ahead and pair a tassel with each one of these. See what's on the back side, and we'll just pair it accordingly. You guys see all those? There you go. Oh good, I'm so glad you guys like them. Roseanne said, would you coat them with anything or leave them as is? So Roseanne, the beautiful thing about sublimation is that you don't need to coat anything. Like it's all ready to roll, it's all sealed, it's all good. You don't have to do a thing. 
which is partly why people like sublimation so much is because even though it takes a little bit more time to learn, um, there's literally no like secondary work. I agree, Tara Lynn, the perfect start to National Crafting Month is cute crafting projects. Literally couldn't get any better. Ooh, we'll use this blue one with this one. Oh, so perfect. And then do we have a pink tassel? I don't think that we do, but maybe let's use, here, we'll use like a hot pink one. That'll go with that one. Okay, so then you just take this little plastic piece and you stick it through the hole on either side. You can just kind of stick the initial plastic piece under there. Then you can stick the key ring on it like this. And then you fold over the other side and you're gonna end up inserting this plastic piece into the hole like this. And then once you snap it, it's totally permanent. So you really don't even need jewelry pliers. I hesitate to say that because you might, it's always a good idea to have them handy, but it's super, super easy. And then when I was putting the tassels on earlier, I used my tweezers to open up my key ring like this. Cause I don't know about you guys, but I hate sticking my nails in there and breaking my nails off. So you just stick the tassel in the key ring like that and twist it until it clicks. And then you have a super cute keychain. How stinking adorable is that? Let me clean up my mess a little bit so you guys can see them. But like so cute, so fast and easy. I just love how these turned out. Ah. So fun. So I'll finish up these keychains and then we are finished for the afternoon. I can't believe it went by so fast. Actually, I'm gonna try putting the tassel on first. I'm gonna see if I like that any better. See if we can get it. There we go. Oh no, June, it says this item is unavailable. I'm sorry, I'll have to try to find a similar one. I did buy these like, I mean, I think back in the fall probably, so it's been a while. I will stick a similar one in my Amazon store for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the circle through the keychain hole, put the key ring in the center, and then fold the other side around it and click it in place through the hole. Whoops, struggling there a little bit, a little clumsy. <laughs> there we go. And we'll click it closed. And that's it. Oh, you guys, I'm even more obsessed than I thought I would be. <laughs> All right. I think I like putting the tassel on last actually, so I'm gonna do that process again that way. Let's see if I can get that clicked in place. There we go. struggling with this one a little bit to get the key ring separated so I can put the tassel on. There we go. Once you get started, it's a lot easier. There we go. Yeah, just one more to go. Time with you guys always goes by so fast. There we go. If you can kind of fold it along the perforations, then it goes a little bit quicker. Oh, did I forget a tassel with this one? I did, all right. No, yes, <laughs> I did, okay. Oh, this one's perfect. 
look at that color match, you guys. And I didn't even do that on purpose. I just picked these random little pieces so quickly. Actually, it took a lot of sorting. I did pick them quickly because I knew exactly what I was looking for, but it took a lot of searching through files to find the right ones. That's why I, I put the link in the description as just the whole search results for design bundles. There are also a ton of crafting clip art um, things on Etsy. So if you wanna look on either one, there are tons and tons of options. These are not your style. There are so many more options. Okay. Yes, you guys, so take a look at these before we roll. I'll show you one final shot of everything, and then we are finished for the afternoon. Can you believe it? Actually, let me go ahead and I'll get you guys really close. I'll take my face away in the corner, and I'll show you guys a really close shot of what everything looks like. Here we go. And this one is one that I made earlier <laughs> when I was practicing. But look how cute. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just can't get enough. So happy National Craft Month to all of my favorite crafters. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. And if you are catching this on the replay, then of course feel free to put any questions that you have down in the comments below because you guys know I am always, always happy to answer your questions and chat more with you about your ideas and your thoughts. And I hope you learned something new about sublimation. Yay! Sorry guys, I'm catching up on your comments. I've never just thought about putting the tassel on the key ring. I'm always adding it with a jump ring. Yeah, Kristen, you can add it with a jump ring as well. That's not necessarily wrong. I just like to keep mine as simple as I possibly can. So if I can avoid a jump ring, I do. Oh, welcome, Terilyn. I'm so glad that you had fun. Thank you for coming and hanging out. You're welcome, Roseanne. Thank you. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this afternoon. So if you had fun and you want to see more sublimation and all the things for me, don't forget to subscribe to DIY Alex. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up so that YouTube knows you loved it too. All right, guys, all the hearts. I love you all. And I'm 